Howdy everybody and welcome back to another episode of Melania's Arsenal, the series where we fight Melania and NG7 with every single weapon. Today we will be using the Duelist Shield, and it's an interesting one. Before we get into it, I'd like to ask if you enjoy the content, please leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more, and leave a comment if you want to choose what's next. This one was personally requested by, if you give me just a second, I can tell you who even asked for it, because I have to go look it up. So sorry. I'll get there. Maybe. I'm so bad at finding comments. It was asked by... Odd Pradana. 6556, I do believe. Yes, Thrusting Shield next, which I do believe... Now that I realize he said Thrusting Shield, I think he means the Duelist Shield. Dueling Shield. Anyway! Uh, there are some things to talk about at first. Yeah, okay. A quote-unquote Thrusting Shield, or Combined Weapon and Shield, enables the weirder, wielder to attack and guard simultaneously. An armament once used in ritual combat performed to honor the Erd Tree, a custom that had somehow remained within the, sh the realm of shadow. Okay, so this thing is a thrusting shield. Most of its attacks are actually thrusts, even though it's listed as standard pierce damage. I think the only standard attack is that one. You're running R2. The other thing to note is that because it's a shield, you can block and have pretty good block numbers, but also you can block and poke at the same time, kind of like if you were standing behind a shield with a rapier. Uh, a couple other things to note, it's a shield, so it gets shield weapon arts, which means I can run Vow the Indomitable on it. But another thing that becomes an issue with this is that it has to stay standard in fusion. You don't have to keep it that, I should say, but I'm keeping it that, because if you didn't know, if you make something quality or keen, or strength heavy, that is, it loses 10% of its guard boost capabilities. Which is a pretty big deal when your shield is your weapon. So right there, that was me using the guard attack. It's pretty handy. It lets you, against Melania, get some unique punishes that you just, there's no other way you would be able to get them. Which I really like. But overall, this weapon it basically plays like a like a great thrusting sword. Almost exclusively, besides the fact that you can block with it. It doesn't get full fizz block capabilities, it's at 88%. But at the same time, that's a lot. Uh, if you're noticing, at the ends of a lot of these attacks, the shield is facing outward. Anytime the shield is facing like that, that is a time that you're also blocking while swinging. And it means... A lot of the time, even if you don't intend to, you might end up blocking attacks, which means you really need to be adamant about your stamina. And on top of that, uh, I, I had something else to say with that. You see right there I blocked and attacked. But basically, be adamant about watching your stamina, and note that if you are attacking, there's a chance that you could be guard broken while attacking if you're not careful. I should have done a charge sortie there. As you can see, though, it has really good uh, stance damage. It's similar to that of, like, a greatsword, I would say. I've tried a little bit of this weapon before. Right there, we did a... See, it has one advantage. That's the option select attack that she does, where you can poke with an R1. And if she's doing that, it'll uh, punish her. But if you time it wrong with this, you're at least still blocking. So you are, like, completely safe. She'll heal a, a decent amount, but, like, beyond that, you are safe. Also, we are demolishing her. I just respect before this. Originally, I had made this thing keen, forgetting about infusions costing you your stability. The other thing to note, if you make it holy or any element or attribute, it ends up, or, like, a element or status, it ends up losing all of its stability down to base, as though it was at plus zero again, which I highly recommend against that. You can be weirdly aggressive in this phase, in ways that you wouldn't normally be able to, as you saw right there. You can just block her kicks, which ends up letting you do some really cool stuff. And with how little fizz damage you take, if you really want to, Instead of running it the way that I have, yeah, I was in the middle of... This is the only thing I don't really know how to handle with uh, this thing. I think that's how you do it, though. 
<laughs> cool. I really like the guard poke version of the attack, not just hitting R1, but holding L1 and hitting R1. It is infinitely chainable as well with itself. Uh, if you're curious, I'm running the Blessed Blue Dude Talisman and the uh, Twin-Headed Turtle Talisman, because I think that's very important for this uh, weapon. Stamina regen, that is. We're just going to fall back on that one and heal. Yeah, that's okay. You just run past her. And then we're running the Great Shield Talisman because it's a 20% card boost, which also matters quite a bit, honestly. We're gonna poke here because it's a little faster to just do the poke, but you're, as you can see, it costs you all of your range, pretty much. But that's okay. Should be. We're pretty close here to just winning. Oh yeah, especially if she does that. Alrighty, I think that's it. I think we win this one. We'll pop this just in case. Uh, personally, I like Valve the Indomitable over uh, Barricade Shield against Melania these days. And I think that stands true even for this. It's a little more expensive, but as you can see with Blessed Blue Dew, it's free. I really like this weapon. And I think there's a lot of intricacies to it that other weapons don't have. Just, whoops, wrong place. Just because you can block and attack at the same time. And I know you could do that with rapiers and things, but this one is so much more effective at it and it has a, a variable move set on it with really good range and better stance damage. Uh, there are two duelist shields. Dueling shields, uh, I keep calling them. Oh, they are actually called thrusting shields, huh? In the weapon class. Uh, I think the other one, I haven't upgraded it yet, but I think it might just be better. You have worse holy and lightning resistance, but... Like, I don't think that matters much. I guess holy resistance is a, a pretty big deal these days, especially since, like, the final boss and stuff has it. Right, we get to use a uh, rune arc for this place. Uh, I had somebody transfer me all of my items, or transfer me every weapon. So, I don't know what I'm doing about the uh, playing through the DLC series. It wasn't doing very well anyway, and it was kind of rough on me. I do want to show off beating all the bosses of the DLC, and perhaps maybe leaving them all alive, because you can reach 90% of them without fighting anything. Perhaps leaving them alive and using them for Millennia Arsenal stuff. Uh, just to really show some things off. And that's really, I know people are interested in those things anyway. I didn't actually check if you can use a grease on it. You can. That's a big deal. That's actually a very big deal. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, I have no use for that, but uh, you could probably use shield grease on it too. Yeah. So if you're really worried about blocking, you could use shield grease on this instead. If you're worried about the not 100% fizz block. Personally, I don't think it matters that much. Oh yeah. I don't mind this at all. Alright, but it's almost getting Scarlet Rotted, that was cool. Yeah, like, you can do things like that, which normally you wouldn't have been able to do. No, oh, he got it off. That sucks. Alright, it's still doing a lot of damage through my shield. Oh, holy cow. That's partially just because also that we're not using the magic defensive shield. You know? I'm thinking for Gideon, I'm thinking the normal R1s are better than shielding R1s. I don't really know a good time to use Val the Indomitable against him. 
Holy cow. That hurt. Uh, this thing does have pretty good holy block, at least. Granted, I'm not blocking anything, so... Please chill for two seconds, dude. I like the range on it's pretty good, too. I will say that. He should explode here, which means we have to back off again. That's okay. We're doing fine. I think this is the first weapon from Melania's arsenal that I think... Or from the DLC. Even though I think all the DLC weapons are really good. I could see this one being one of the ones that really pushes far on this if I just don't die in that split second there. Oh, chill, dude. Oh, chill, dude. He's charging them? I didn't even know he could charge them. What the heck? Did you guys know he did charges on his spells sometimes? Alright, we got him. That was pretty good. Especially since he hurt our, our magic and physical, or our magic and holy resistance. Uh, I'm trying to not scroll through my inventory too much because I don't want to spoil other weapons if you guys aren't aware of them. Gil. Oh god, I know, dude. And there are some pretty big deals of some of them. And I know a lot of you, or at least a couple of you people, uh, have been waiting to watch just due to the fact that I could be revealing spoilery things, but... So that's really why I'm trying to not show off the inventory. I think I want to do a bit of a guide for the DLC, is what I'm wanting to do. Attempting to either put together where the Skadu Tree Fragments are, or at least kind of an advisement of like, hey, here's a good way to tackle the DLC. Uh, how to access like the important areas without having to fight bosses, things like that. Because I think that's a very big deal in understanding the Skadu Tree, which is apparently a way to say shadow, but uh, understanding how those work and where to get them early is kind of important, I think. All right. I feel like he's going to be terrible to guard attack against, but I'll try it. Eh, that wasn't that bad. Actually, though, like, honestly, not bad at all. Ouch. Also, I mean, I guess he doesn't heal. That's one of the big issues with Melania, right? I really like the L1 poke, the L1 R1 poke, I should say. Also, like, apparently you don't get any knockback from blocking while you're doing the jabs. That's huge. Now, we shouldn't be able to block this, right? Oh, we can! What about his stomps, then, if we're poking? We can! Okay, that's massive, because if you didn't know, typically when you're fighting him, those become AoEs that hit everywhere. I I'm liking this. And we got put into a good position for phase two, I think. Yeah. Alright, never mind. I changed my mind. This weapon is great against him. <laughs> Especially him. <laughs> Holy cow. Just don't get grabbed by, like, these attacks, and then you can just, like, shield poke him. Through all of eternity. Like, who cares, right? That's... holy cow, guys. Uh, this changes the Horalu fight completely. It disables him. Holy cow, guys. Did you see that? Okay. Maybe the best weapon for fighting Horalu ever. <laughs> he actually could not combat that. So here's one thing to note. Unlike when you're normally blocking, if something would knock you backwards, it does not. You don't have any hit stun. 
blocks done while blocking either. So you are free to do actions because of it. And it completely defines his fight. That's awesome. And uh, let's go ahead and just take down Radagon, I guess, shall we? We'll see how we do against him. I feel like phase one will be fine, phase two might get a bit iffy. Because of the holy damage. Start the run attack early. We can get four, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, I think Great Shield Talisman was a wonderful choice, guys. Yeah, okay. I'm changing my opinion on this very quickly. I tried the shield poking stuff against Melania, and it wasn't great. Against things that uh, don't reaction dodge constantly, it feels really good. Also, it makes you crouch, which is a really big advantage that doesn't get talked about much. All right. I forgot how to dodge this for a second there. Let's see if we can dodge this part correctly. Oh, we did it. I think you just don't have to respect like anything from... This weapon might define the base game. <laughs> <laughs> as, like, no respect, right? Like, who cares that he's doing that? You just roll the biggest stuff, and then you just poke away. I still rolled poorly for that, jeez, dude. Alright. I mean, like, we did beat him within, like, two flasks. This is the only the second time we've gotten to see... Uh... Elden Beast as well, by the way, since we unlocked the horse option. Oh, I can show off horse combat in every episode, that means. Oh, it's a poke, and it's a good poke at that. I mean, even if he was dangerous with these pokes, he's not anymore. So when it comes to this attack, I guess now you just like ride around him and poke him during it, right? Yeah. I know my horse got a little tapped there, but I didn't. Alright. L1, hold L1, mash R1. Feels incredibly strong on this weapon, I gotta say. And like, this is New Game Plus 7, and we are just demolishing things. And we don't have to care at all. So I think against bosses that aren't Melania, block, put on the Spear Talisman, and just go to town, right? As long as it's not got, like, really high elemental effects. You're fine. He's probably going to do rings here, right? Finally. Yeah. And then he's going to land and then do triple rings, I think, right? Rings feel so dodgeable now, by the way. I have no idea where he spawns after rings now, just because being on horseback changes that a little bit. Oh no, not my horse. Except, like, I can just use a flask. The only issue with this is I think he's trying to set up for Elden Rings again. Also, what is going on with the, uh, yeah. This thing is chasing me better than I've ever seen it do. That's okay. It barely clipped us. Uh, there we go. I have no, okay, I was gonna say I have no idea where they're spawning. So big explosions like that that would knock you backwards, I think you can just R1 through now is the thing, like L1, R1 through. I don't care about taking 12% damage when that is effectively nothing, huh? Compared to, like, the damage that I get out of it. Alright. Whoa. Oh. 
I gotta say, I think this weapon's really good. I forgot to block there. That's my bad. He whiffed. That's so sad for him. I might die. Nope, not dead. Not even close. Because I'm blocking. Alright. Uh, thrusting shield. Dueling shield. Very, very good. I uh, like incredibly so. Like, game defining good in terms of how it handles bosses. To the point where I think if they wanted to nerf them, they could, but I would be incredibly sad if they did so. We'll just mend the Elden Ring. I don't know why I did that. But, uh. It's a very strong option that, uh. Has almost no downsides. Like, no matter what I'm fighting, if it has physical damage only, and even sometimes a little bit of holy, just hold L1 and mash R1. Nothing does enough stamina damage to you. To uh, at least at 50 endurance, right? Nothing does enough to guard break you. Even an NG7. Real quick. It's a shield. And it upgrades with smithing stones. I want to compare the uh, guard boost capabilities. I thought this one was going to get, like, way higher, and... Um, excuse me? What do you mean, 76 guard boost? For reference, this thing has 79, and it's one of the best shields in the game. In the base game. This thing gets 76, you can two-hand it. It has CC, strength, and deck scaling. It's got... Like, actually the same damage, pretty much. 291 plus 320. It's basically the same damage. And if you have int, it's better. Holy cow, guys. That thing's gonna be insane. Anyway, for now, though, thank you for watching. If you did enjoy, do the things I recommend. It helps me a lot, and I'm enjoying growing with you guys. And I'm enjoying showing off these DLC weapons. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Bye.